hello from Bill. Uh, I'm going to analyze my round 7 game with Igor Kurnosov, Russian Grandmaster. Uh, I have already played him twice in the last few days. Mm, once during Rapid Tournament and the next time in the Blitz Tournament and I lost both games. So I, I was not uh, feeling so good about playing with him. And normally in similar situations I would play very solid and not be afraid of making draw with white pieces, but before this tournament I, I made one decision together with my coach to try to play a bit sharper and not to make early draws, so I decided to go for bishop g5 Nidorf after all. Okay, he's a famous expert in bishop g5 Nidorf. He plays it both with uh, white and black pieces. So here I played. <coughs> okay, he played knight knight d7. This is a modern move, and I played uh, one game just a few days ago. So he could probably expect more queen e2. This is move that he also uses himself. Well, once I heard from. Grandmaster Peter Popovich that Queen in Sicilian positions should always go to e2 if possible, so I don't know, I mean, uh, if this is uh, true or not, but it makes some sense, because Bishop on f1 is generally quite okay, mm, and uh, there are always some things connected with knight d5 or f4 e5 pushes, also rook from d1 is open. So after queen e2 he played one of the critical lines, h6, bishop h4 and g6. And I actually studied uh, this line from his game that he played with uh, Wojtaszek. And I followed his game after f4. I want to push e5, so black goes e5 himself. Now I'm not sure if he wants to take my knight because there will be some e5 push, but he, he wants to take my pawn on f4. This is the real threat, so I have to exchange these pawns. Oh, I'm not sure if I have to, but it, it looked logical to me when I studied this line. And now I can castle. I, I don't need to move my knight right away. And uh, I think in game who Anand, and maybe the world champion probably played bishop e7 if I remember well and uh, somehow it didn't look like the best move so Igor played queen c7 which looked more logical to me and uh, actually he followed his game that he played with white pieces against Wojtaszek now I moved my knight back to b3 and uh, I was not really sure um, about the concrete moves the, the right move order, but I remembered the setup. After b5, I knew I should play a3, but I, I was not sure if I can do it right away. After a3, black can maybe take. Okay, probably it's not working because also white has some tactical resources, but I was not sure, and finally I understood that I should start not with a3, but with queen f3. Now I'm attacking his knight, he needs to protect it, the g5 is always positionally bad. And uh, Black's philosophy is this, he wants to castle, he will have safe king for a very long time. And he will try to organize some play on, on the queen side. On the other hand, white cannot play on just on the king side. For example, the idea to move bishop somewhere, push g4, h4 and g5 or h5. This is just one of the ideas, but actually white is also trying to play uh, in the center and on the queen side and he will only push this g4, h4 if he has really too much time. So I couldn't remember now exactly what was the correct move order and I started with a3 and uh, he castled, which looked... Uh, like one one of the normal moves and I played king b1 I didn't want to go bishop d3 I was remembering in the game something like this happened and black went bishop b7 he played 
Rook HF1. Okay, I don't know if, if all these are his moves. Just I remember the final position of my analysis is this. And uh, now black probably wants to take the knight on c3. And I just go bishop e1. This is a very nice square for bishop. So now I want to push g4, h4 and so on. And everything seems to be safe. Black cannot push his pawns so easily. Of course position is not clear. But now during the game I, I couldn't understand how I should start. If I play bishop d3 I was afraid he could go rook b8. <coughs> Actually to me this play with... <coughs> Rook b8 and sometimes b4 looked much more logical. Uh, so I started with king b1. My idea was that after rook b8 my d1 rook is still going to stay open and it is not uh, clear if black wants to push b4 because after b4 let's say okay I, I will just make the move that I made in the game anyway after b4 I can take twice and then take on d7 knight on f6 is unprotected so black has to take with it then I go knight d5 and uh, black has to protect the rook with for example queen b8 and here I can either take on b4 or I can consider bishop e7 as well attacking again both of his rooks and so on so I was not uh, of course absolutely sure but it looked uh, like I was pretty safe and I was not sure if black was safe so I decided to start with king b1 but but he did play he didn't want to go to, to make the same plane like with, with Ashik he played the uh, rook b8 I was worried about this because I noticed now if I just go bishop d3 he will play b4 and this opening of b file looked like very useful thing for black so I decided to start with bishop e2 and uh, now my idea is similar I want to go rook h to f1 g4 maybe sometimes later bishop e1 h4 and so on but at the same time I'm keeping my rook open so that after b4 I will be able to take and take on d7 and now I was expecting black to go bishop b7 or maybe push b4 but uh, mostly I was, I was expecting bishop b7 then I thought okay now his rook is not open anymore I can now play even bishop d3 but probably I will st start with g4 because e4 is not threatened in the mo at the moment so g4 maybe later I will have to make another bishop move for example I can go g4 and after ro rook b c8 now uh, as minimum I can play bishop d3 and transpose to this game or, or some similar position from my analysis okay but uh, he was thinking a lot and I I wasn't sure what he was thinking about and then he found very nice original move he played rook b6 and I liked this move very much uh, this rook is now protecting the knight on f6 which is a very important thing because now his d7 knight can play then another thing is he's just preparing doubling or tripling for example after bishop b7 rook c8 rook c6 he can triple on the c file after bishop b7 he will keep b4 possibility also just rook c6 is very very nice idea sometimes he wants just to take the knight on c3 and well in, this move is really beautiful so I I was thinking now what to do and uh, I uh, my, my first idea was to play rook h to f1 but uh, here I was worried I think about uh, something like rook c6 now he wants m probably to take my my knight on d3 and his other idea is to go knight b6 and then knight c4 I thought it was also a nice idea because knight on f6 is protected and here I, I didn't like a rook d3 because of knight b6 and I was thinking about knight d5 and after knight takes d5, e d5, rook c2 now he wants to push e4 and win the game sometimes rook b2 is also possible so the only move I was considering was 
queen e4. And here I was somehow worried about bishop f5. Now it's obvious for me that it's not working because my rook is on f1 and protecting this square. But during the game I thought he will go somewhere with his knight from d7, maybe knight c5 and bishop f5. This looked somehow very very dangerous and I decided that this was too dangerous for me and that I couldn't play like that. But uh, move g4 uh, looked much safer because I'm taking f5 under control now and now after rook c6 I thought it would be safe to jump on d5 and after rook c2 I can play queen e4 and now he, is, he doesn't have any squares for his rook of course he can sacrifice it in several ways mm, but okay this was the best position I could find so I was ready to, to play this and after g4 he didn't think too much he played a logical normal move bishop b7 put bishop to, to the nice place also he's protecting d5 square once and for all he doesn't have to think about some rook d7 sacrifices when my knight will come to d5 and uh, well he almost completed his development and he's ready to go b4 or rook c8 sometimes so i didn't simply want to to wait but i couldn't find something very good for myself mm, I never liked jumping to d5 I, I considered this in, in, in this position because uh, he takes and now his bishop on g7 is a, a real monster he can probably well probably he should block this d pawn somehow I'm not sure how well probably not with the queen because I saw if he plays like this, maybe I can go bishop e1 and bishop b4. Maybe he can put uh, his rook there, or maybe he can play rook c8, attacking the c2 pawn. I don't know. It's possible that this position is also playable, but somehow it didn't look like I was doing the correct things. So, I also considered bishop f2. And uh, now he goes rook c6 definitely and now I was thinking probably about this when he takes and takes on c2 and now queen e4 is no longer possible he can just protect now his rook I cannot win any material so this knight d5 didn't look so great so I I decided to go rook h to f1 here it's a normal move I'm putting some pressure on f6 and f7 and uh, now his rook somehow shouldn't go from f8 most probably at least I thought he would feel like this and of course my biggest worry was b4 because with his last move he covered d5 square and now b4 is possible here uh, after b4 I would just take and take on d7 and once he takes with the knight I jump to d5 but uh, after bishop b7 he covered this critical square but I thought it was not a problem I thought after b4 I would take and after he takes I would anyway take on d7 he has to take with the knight and I go bishop e7 and I somehow thought this position was very good I checked uh, quite a lot maybe I spent 2-3 minutes looking at this position and uh, his rook from f8 cannot move and I thought if he goes with other rook then somehow I, I saw my bishop coming to c4 for example if he goes rook b6 I saw my bishop coming to c4 for some reason which is actually not possible because he, he simply collects this bishop with his queen and he protects f7 okay in this position he spent a lot of time 12 minutes okay not too much and he understood before was possible and I also didn't see other way for black to play because now everything uh, is placed well 
and uh, rook c6 in this in this setup didn't look so great now i can also play bishop e1 stopping his play completely now his bishop is closed there is no well maybe there is some sacrifice on on c3 i'm not sure about this but okay and my other possibility of course is <coughs> to play knight d5 i don't know what happens there knight d5 pawn takes rook c2 okay this is probably not possible because he can still protect his rook okay in any case it didn't feel uh, very nice for him to close this bishop by his rook it was an option but he spent some time and he pushed b4 i just checked there was nothing else possible for example uh, knight a4 uh, it's never possible because e4 is hanging so i take and now if i don't uh, take on d7 i i thought his position would be better because uh, he's attacking e4 three times already he has a really very nice coordination of his pieces so i took on d7 and i i still thought my position was very good but I don't remember where exactly I and yes before I took before I took here I understood what what was going to happen I understood after this and bishop b7 he was simply going to retreat to b6 that's what he did and uh, now I at first I thought I would have to take the rook on f8 he has to take with okay he can include rook f6 maybe but I thought he would take with uh, with the knight protecting f7 and he wants to jump uh, with his knight to e6 and d4 and at the same time if i try to go knight d5 he he still takes and um, although now his knight cannot enter e6 and d4 his position still looked good and i maybe only because he has this move because he can push a5 he wants to push also a4 i cannot take this pawn because of rook b2 king b2 e4 this is all because his bishop g7 which is not such a great piece turned into a monster so i was trying to find the alternatives here and i understood knight a5 was an interesting move and i decided to play it because i attack his bishop i i sometimes i simply want to eliminate his bishop and then put my bishop somehow to c4 b3 or some, something like that sometimes i want to go knight c4 and uh, sometimes i just want to play bishop c4 immediately i was uh, quite optimistic here because i thought it was not possible to move the rook from f8 it looked crazy and uh, well i did think a little about rook b8 but but i thought if rook b8 i can first take on, on f7 or i can just come to c4 maybe i will take first i will see this looked very bad i thought he would play something like rook f6 for example and after i take he takes with his knight this was one possible way to play I probably take on b7 <coughs> and now although it looks like my position is very nice it's actually not so clear because his pieces are not active at the moment but positionally he is very solid and still I, I think my position is also good because my bishop on c4 will be good I can do sometimes h4 and either g5 or h5 so okay I thought maybe I was even a bit better here and uh, which other moves did i consider okay he cannot take here because i take and now if he takes my knight he loses f8 and also f7 and if he plays rook b8 now okay i can just return to b3 or first take f7 so it's not possible mm. so i i i don't remember if i saw some other ways of course he he might have other moves as well but but what he chose surprised me he, he had courage to play rook b8 and 
Now at first I my feeling was my position must be winning now. I, I saw knight c4 is one option. And now he cannot save his exchange anymore because he really needs to take care of f7 pawn now. But uh, I was feeling taking f7 was probably the best. And now I was not sure where he should go, h7 or h8. Maybe h8 uh, looks a bit safer because g6 is not uh, under some big danger and if he goes to h7 sometimes I will have some funny moves like bishop f6 when both his bishop and knight are pinned. Probably not immediately but maybe in some moment. So after king h8 at first it looked great because I don't care that I'm an exchange down. I was not afraid of being an exchange down. I was afraid of uh, threats to my king. He wants to go uh, rook takes b2, king b2, bishop d5. Other idea is to take queen c3. And uh, the only way I thought I could prevent this was to play knight b3. I didn't feel like going back here with my knight. I thought then my position would be bad. Of course, knight c4 is the most logical move and the first move I considered and I actually thought for a second I was winning but then I saw he has rook b2 check. I cannot take with my king because of bishop d5 check and I lose my queen so I was thinking about either taking with knight or king c1 king c1 looked really crazy <coughs> if I take with the knight he takes my knight on c3 and now my e4 is hanging material is same I should try somehow to exchange queens and maybe I can still play but I didn't see reason why I would be better here. So okay, the only other move that I considered is king c1, but uh, it looked possible because everything is protected, uh, material is same, but position is really crazy. I couldn't understand what was going on here. Maybe, maybe now I want to take rook knight b2, maybe not. I, I simply couldn't under understand, I couldn't calculate anymore, so my feeling was that I was probably not better in this case where he takes my b2 pawn with his rook and I have to run away. So after thinking much, I spent 13 minutes out of 39 that I had. I spent one third of my time and sadly I had to play knight c4. So I, I was now pretty sure what was going to happen after knight c4 because I didn't see any other logical moves for him. He played knight f6. Now he's attacking my bishop on e7 and I have to take the rook. If he takes my knight on b6 I would be really very happy. Okay, if he takes my knight I I just take f6. Probably... Ah no, I cannot take f6 yes because of bishop e4. If he takes, ah yes, now I remembered. If he takes my knight, I, I can play knight a4. This was my idea. Well, I don't know. Maybe I have some other moves because here it looks like bishop e4 can be dangerous. I cannot, I, I didn't calculate anymore. I saw knight a4 and thought I was winning. I also thought I would have other possibilities here. But... Uh, he took, of course, my bishop, which is positionally very nice, and around here I thought mm, I was really starting to feel gradually outplayed by a player who, who sees a bit more than me and uh, who understands the position a bit better. Now, I, I want, my plan was to go bishop c4 some moves ago, but now I saw it It was not possible because of queen b4 and he, he's threatening with queen b6, queen c4, bishop e4 and things like this, so I'm lost. So I, I wanted almost to go b3 to cover my king a bit, but finally I, I realized I had to return with my knight to c4. It was not an easy decision because 
I wanted to see my bishop there and my knight would uh, go to d5 some in some moment this was my dream to exchange pieces have some position where my endgame will be always better than pressure on f7 but I just don't have time for this and after knight c4 he played uh, bishop c8 which looked like a strong move to me he's attacking pawn on g4 and he wants to put this bishop to e6 he wants to come queen b4 maybe so I, I, I was already really down on time let me just see I I was 20 minutes 21 minutes I had I still had some time he had 13 by the way so somehow I always wanted to push h4 and g5 and things like this I didn't really want to play h3 but now probably I, I would play h3 in the game somehow I quickly decided just one minute I spent here and I quickly made this big decision to go knight d5 and open his monster bishop <coughs> my plan was never to do it but now I thought maybe it was best and uh, well now I would maybe like to block this pawn somehow so he pushes it this is what I was expecting and I, I wanted to go queen f4 now at first to attack his rook and keep pressure on his f7 pawn and uh, I was only not sure what happens after which move was I thinking of queen b7 I'm, I'm starting to forget now yes queen, queen b7 that's the move I saw for him and it looked uh, bad for me because he wants to go bishop, to take bishop b2 and I didn't want to play b3 and mm, make his bishop even better and I didn't see of course that I could take queen e4 maybe and what happens after bishop b2 I can check on e8 and now knight d6 well this is a very nice idea that I missed of course because okay it's difficult and it looks really scary so I, I decided that uh, c3 was a crucial move for my defense here that I wouldn't be able to make it without this move and I played queen g3 I'm attacking his rook and now if he goes rook b4 I will just play c3 my queen is protecting this pawn of course minus uh, negative side is that uh, his f7 is not uh, under attack anymore so he can probably do something like queen b4 now after queen b4 probably if I remember well, yes, I was calculating queen c7. I'm not uh, defending my pawn on b2, I'm attacking his pawn on f7. And now I thought if he takes, I will take king h8. Well, queen e8 is probably winning. Ah, no, no, no. He wants to go king h7 and then cover bishop g7. So. I saw as minimum I can exchange queens here and okay I was not worried anymore about this position but here now I see I can even take rook c8 I didn't see this far but I saw even if I go somewhere with with my rook the position didn't look so bad because he, he cannot uh, gain anything by this cover check at most this pawn on h2 and I will have good position so I was not worried about queen b4 and uh, the move I was m worried about the most was rook b5, the move that he played. He's attacking my pawn on d5 and he wants to provoke me to push this pawn. Then his bishop will come to e6, queen b7 and bishop e6. Then he will have a really perfect harmony of his pieces and I wanted to avoid this if possible. So I decided now to play c3. I already started to gamble a lot because... Mm, 
I started to dislike my position, I thought uh, I had serious problems. But okay, if I manage somehow one or two moves, somehow to to do what is necessary, maybe maybe I can have a normal position. But his bishop in on g7 is simply strong, very strong. And now I was only afraid, I, I said, okay, if he doesn't play rook d5, I thought I would somehow manage to, to defend and then have a normal game. I was worried only about rook takes d5 and now I was planning to go knight b6. And here I was uh, considering two moves for him, rook d2 and rook d8. If he goes rook d8, I wanted to take on c8 and take on a6. So now material is same, but my king is somehow in more danger. But here I thought if he moves his rook away from the c-file, I will go bishop c4. So he, he must stay on the c-file. I thought best move was rook c7 also to cover uh, b8 square so that my queen can, cannot check from there. And actually I thought his position would be better here. Maybe even much better, maybe even winning. Because I he has also this uh, dangerous e-pawn. And... Uh, well, his king is not perfectly safe, but it, it is much safer than my king and my bishop cannot get to this critical diagonal. So I was really worried, but I decided to go for this and see what happens. And I was hoping that maybe he would go rook d2 instead, because it looks like a nice trick. If I take the bishop on c8, he goes queen b7 and my position is lost. Extra piece doesn't matter, and my king will just be checkmated. But here, after rook d2, I, I found a nice resource queen b8. So now, important thing is that uh, rook b2 doesn't work, and after check on b4, I can just play king a2. I'm not sure if uh, I can win, but <coughs> def <coughs> definitely I'm not going to lose. I saw after queen a5, I can go king b1. So I'm not going to lose c3 with check and there will be no checkmate. But uh, here of course black should try to play rook e2. Then I take with knight on c8 and now very strong knight e7 is coming with queen g8 checkmate idea. So he has to go queen f8 and after knight e7 he has to move his king, king h8 loses to knight g6, so he has to go to h7, now I take on f8, take, he has to cover with bishop, and I was actually even uh, thinking about this position while it was his time to think, and I thought okay, probably it, it must be drawish, but I was not sure, I thought maybe he was even better even here, because he wants to take on h2 and I didn't see how, how to create something serious with my uh, rook and knight. But I thought it would most probably be a draw. So this was let's say my trick and I wanted to... Uh, I was afraid of, of this rook d8 and just playing position with same material and very strong bishop. But he didn't take uh, that pawn at all. He played another interesting move. <coughs> Queen b7. He is now attacking one more time, this pawn on d5, and now he really wants to take it for free. I cannot jump knight d6 because of problem on b2. So I didn't spend too much time, I didn't have too much time. I had uh, 8 minutes, I spent 1 minute and I saw move rook d1. It looked like a good move. I'm now protecting pawn on d5 and I thought uh, Black wouldn't be able to take this pawn because I can also take and then go queen b8 and uh, I thought I was winning a piece but actually after queen b7 I'm not winning anything and uh, here I, I probably even lost so but that was my idea after after rook d5 I want to exchange rooks and play queen b8. 
maybe there is other possibility to go knight b6 and then take on c8 let's check a bit i saw this but i thought mm, well this doesn't look so bad either maybe because he has problem on f7 he has weak pawn on a6 and my pawns can also be strong all the also there are opposite color bishops so sometimes i will be able to exchange queens so maybe this is playable but of course black is better mm, but after this after i went uh, rook d1 i i don't well i saw if he goes rook b3 with idea to take bishop c3 i can just play king c2 and it looked like a very nice position and uh, that's pretty much what I saw here and uh, when I played this I had 7 minutes, he had 6 minutes only he played here king h7 mm. he didn't think too much, ok, not too much time but this somehow looked a bit slow to me and now I should be able to do some things now i guess his idea was maybe to exchange now on d5 to take on d5 and i will not have queen b8 move i i thought that's why he played this but of course i i didn't have queen b8 at any moment so maybe this was totally unnecessary move and uh, now i noticed okay now i want to jump knight d6 but i cannot do it immediately i want to do it after he uh, takes on d5 so I was thinking about queen c2 for example with idea after rook d5 to jump knight to d6 but after king c2 I was I think I was afraid of f5 maybe and he's trying to open some space for his c8 bishop if he, this bishop comes to f5 I will be dead so I played another move, rook d2, which is achieving the same thing. I'm moving my rook away and at the same time I'm protecting b2 one more time so now knight can jump even if he doesn't take my pawn on d5. And I saw the, the move that he played <coughs> and I was now starting to think that my position was okay and that maybe he didn't I was most afraid of exactly the, the thing that he played he sacrificed his queen now but before he sacrificed his queen he spent almost all his time he, he went down to one minute I had five minutes left and he took on d5 I played knight d6 now I want to exchange on d5 and then take his bishop so he has to take Okay, other option is to sacrifice on d6, but then I think I'm better, or at least good. <coughs> I took his queen, he took on e2, of course. And now it was critical where to go with, with the knight. I can go either d6 or c5. If I go to d6, black plays bishop e6. This is a beautiful square for, for his bishop. I cannot uh, use my queen to attack somehow his rook and all his pieces are very safe and he has many plans he can even slowly push his a pawn I didn't see what to do and uh, that's why I decided to go to c5 now at least his bishop from c8 cannot move and uh, if he pushes f5 which looks maybe interesting, then I can go queen c7 uh, trapping his bishop and now the only move that saves his bishop was f4 and now I thought I wouldn't be able to take the bishop because f-pawn is too fast and I can do nothing to stop it but I can simply take back with my queen on f4 and now my position should be very good so f5 is not working and uh, not easy to see some moves for him so he played some logical move he pushed his pawn it's also giving me some squares uh, but maybe problem for him was that he was afraid he would somehow lose the rook because really this rook doesn't have too many squares and if I manage to go with my knight 
Uh, he cannot lose the rook. What am I talking about? I thought I was dreaming that that it was somehow possible to trap his rook, but it's not possible. So okay, he pushed e3, and uh, now I, I cannot attack his rook with my queen because of rook e1 check. So I want to attack his rook with my knight. I wanted to play knight d3, knight c1, for example, or knight knight b3 is also possible, but knight d3, knight c1, it looked uh, most logical, then I take queen e3, I take this pawn, he will uh, mm, coordinate his pieces, and probably it will be some drawish endgame, I thought, because his bishops are, are still strong. But I thought, uh, if I go now knight d3, he can play bishop b7, and after knight c1, he can just play rook g2 and when I take he can now take my pawn on g4 now I, I, I gave this pawn, I didn't want to give this pawn without need because I thought maybe even black can have better position because he will push his pawns and oops, somehow it looked like black was better and I made a difficult decision here to play s very slowly, h3, I spent 3 of my remaining 5 minutes and pushed h3. Now I'm saving my pawn on h2, I'm saving my pawn on g4 sometimes, oh, sorry, not, not here, here immediately I pushed h3, without letting him play with his bishop, and also it was quite easy to control the situation, because he cannot play with his rook on e2, and uh, bishop on c8 can only go to e6, then I can at least take this bishop and I'm not sure if, if it's winning, but it should be. So his bishop from g7 obviously doesn't have moves, he doesn't have pawn moves, so it was quite easy to make. I thought maybe he would go a5, of course I saw also move f5 for him, but it looked also risky, so I was not sure if he would do it, but he did it and really quickly and I think it is the best move and now <coughs> I had very little time of course and uh, I had to check of course if I can take his bishop but I thought uh, that he would have very strong rook d2 move with idea to play rook d1 and e2 and promote his pawn and I didn't really see what to do here so, um, what else? I decided to continue with my idea. I played knight d3. I, I don't want to give his bishop f5 square. When he takes, I will take with my h pawn. And right now I thought he had to take, because I thought he would have to play for this bishop b7 idea. And then I can take this pawn on f5. So this is very bad for him because I will, after he takes, maybe I can go knight f4 and queen g6 and so on. So he should keep uh, his pawn cover for him, for the king, and he should take on g4. I checked a bit, nothing else. I have to take because his I must not let his bishop to f5. And now I was expecting him to go bishop b7, and I was planning to go knight c1. Yes, that's what he played, he played bishop b7, and I was planning to play knight c1 here. First, my first idea was to go knight f4, to have more active piece, but then I saw bishop e5 for him, and I now I see queen h4 maybe, but during the game I didn't see, so maybe queen h4 can be enough for some perpetual. Okay, during the game I didn't have time to see this. <coughs> Knight c1 was one idea, but then I thought uh, maybe, I don't know if bishop e4, at least he can go rook g2, and again have this position where I thought his bishop will go to e4 and f5, he will start pushing his h-pawn, I thought he was risking nothing here, and I thought black was better. So I decided to go queen f4, no, not knight c1, but queen f4 to, to just cover this e4 square. Again it was helping me a lot that uh, black doesn't have too many moves in this position. He cannot push 
his pawns, he cannot play with one bishop, Ad with g7 bishop, he cannot play, bishop, b b7 bishop doesn't have too many squares, of course he's not going to go to g2 or h1, rook cannot move because I will take e3 pawn. So after queen f4 he played bishop d5, one of the logical moves, he wants to go maybe to b3, and then have some mating threats, so I pushed c4, it was a difficult decision in time trouble, but I, I just had maybe half a minute or something like this, or one minute. So I'm opening now his g7 bishop, which is mm, now pinning my knight forever for the defense of this pawn. But I thought I had to push c4. And I don't know, I didn't even consider his moves here, what he would do, I had no idea. He played bishop e6, it was move 39, and uh, now I didn't want to go again queen f3, because of rook h2, and I saw when I take this, he can take on g4 and uh, again have that position I didn't want, but this time even better version, because his g7 bishop is also open, and I think it should be lost now, probably. So I decided to make one almost waiting move, I play queen e4, okay, it's not completely waiting, because he has to move his bishop somewhere, but it was my move 40, and after this I could relax a bit, uh, wash my face, rest, and then start to think again. When I returned to the board, I saw he played bishop d7. Well, probably now I see that he do, he cannot play bishop f7 because of queen f3. Double attack. So he played bishop d7. While I was away from the board, I was really happy. I thought my position was most probably winning. I was just not sure if I have a forced win or or, or if I will still have to fight and continue looking for very good moves, but when I returned to the board I understood position was not clear at all. It took me more than 10 minutes to, to understand that I didn't even have any advantage. So what were my ideas? First idea, knight f4 let's say. He takes on b2, king c1, and he can return to b6 with his rook. He's covering all sensitive squares, I can take e3, but I'm not going to win, win that position, of course, obviously. So, this was out of question. Next idea, after bishop d7, sorry, next idea was to go queen f3 maybe, attack his rook and force the matters, he goes rook h2, I take his pawn on e3, he takes my pawn on g4, and now I was thinking about some double attacks like queen g1 or queen g3, let's say queen g1, but uh, finally I saw that he can even play like this, and when I take h2, he takes, I go somewhere with my king, he takes also this pawn, this bishop will be safe on b5, and he will start pushing his pawns. Well, most probably I have some way to give some perpetual checks, try to get my king maybe closer to the king side, also to defend, but I I was thinking that uh, black would have very, very good ch practical chances to win the game, and that it was absolutely impossible to lose the game with black pieces, of course. So, this was also out of question. So, what else? Hmm. I was thinking about moves like b3 or king a2, I was afraid a bit of his bishop a4 move, for example, which move did I see? If I go, hmm. I, I, I was thinking about something and I saw bishop a4 for him, but now I don't know anymore what, what this was, maybe something like king c1. Or Ok, in any case, b3 doesn't seem, because I anyway I don't have control of this square, so at least I can keep control over light squares. So b3 seemed 
to be one possibility but I just thought he would go rook h2 and when I take this pawn he takes this pawn then again he wants to go bishop to f5 and uh, if I go something like queen h1 now now maybe it would be working if he gives me even now I'm not sure if he if I win but probably I should win if he gives me uh, more material with bishop f5 but he can go rook h4 and he's able to protect everything and positioning uh, this bishop is controlling for on f5 it will be fun, really fantastic bishop it's controlling c8 it's uh, attacking my king knight everything keeping safe his own king so i thought it would be also bad position for me i looked at king a2 also and finally i decided to just make a draw by playing knight e5 now bishop e8 uh, looked uh, like one possible try for him to play for a win but then i thought i would probably push c5 get this pawn closer to the 8th rank and I didn't see really for him how to continue I saw one possibility like this rook d2 he gives me this pawn then goes rook d5 to attack my knight and now I jump in somewhere with this knight I was not sure where and maybe this position is playable but I I thought um, there was no way black could be better here because my c pawn is dangerous so I was pretty sure he was going now to take on e5 and then take on g4. I tried to find some checks with my queen but they don't work. Mm. Black has very simple idea. He wants to push h5. For example this can be his first move, h5. Then he will move his rook somewhere, push e2 and then he will have e1 threat. So <coughs> it's only important if he he can get he can play h5 if he gets to play h5 i cannot win so i was thinking about this and checking on d8 and now i thought if he goes king g7 i would have this check on d4 and win but uh, he can go to h7 and there is nothing i can do I can only repeat the position and he can also go to f7 and, uh, if he wants to try to play for a win. So I, I would just repeat the moves here, I already made my decision and I was waiting for him to, to play this. But to my su huge surprise, after playing a really good game, I think he, he was playing excellent game until now, maybe some inaccuracy, but it was difficult and very strong game by him. In this moment he failed to see that this was draw. He, after the game I asked him, he told he he spent here how much time exactly? After I played he spent 22 minutes. 22 minutes here. He spent almost all his time. He he only got half an hour after move 40 and and he thought that he he told me that after c5 maybe my position is winning i don't understand how this can be possible because bishop is controlling c8 i i just think i can do this let's say i push more he checks i don't know where will i go with, with my king let's say here he pushes e2 of course it's obvious i i can only draw here and maybe black can of course think about playing for a win somehow so he had this drop of concentration and in this position he played bishop a4 it's a logical idea he wants to come to c2 but now i can immediately make a draw if i want so he was actually not trying to play for a win he was trying to make a draw but he made it he made a big mistake and now of course I, I checked a bit and took on g6 and he played king h8 now i can go king knight f7 knight h6 and uh, repeat moves but now i spent uh, much time here after king h8 i had 11 minutes here and i spent nine and came down to around two and a half minutes i had after i played 
my move here and I was worried uh, if I take this pawn on h6 then my knight goes a bit away from the center and he cannot go to f8 of course because of the checkmate but he goes back to h8 and now his pieces are active hmm. I thought maybe it would be possible to go to some endgame I, I thought like this and maybe knight g5 and uh, I thought now if he goes immediately bishop c2 probably this should be winning because I will take his e pawn then should be winning b3 king d3 knight f3 he cannot stop it probably but I thought uh, here he would take uh, this pawn on b2 and I have to go here he goes rook c2 and I thought I had to take maybe it's possible to run somewhere with a king but in I couldn't think about this during the game I was only considering taking here and this looked a drawish because I lost one of my pawns and I will he will take my g pawn with his king he will, he will use a pawn as a di distraction and then I will have only one pawn which is not enough to win so I thought if my knight goes to h6 then most probably it was going to be a draw and uh, I started to think about king a2 and finally I made this move I also considered b3 but after bishop takes b3 <coughs> I didn't see that I managed to change something here I, I checked uh, this line, check, check, he goes here, I check, he goes to h7, now I checked this move, and he takes on h6, I tried some more checks on h1, but they didn't seem to work and I stopped around here. And finally I decided to go king a2. And uh, now I, my idea is to move away from this diagonal, so bishop c2 is, I thought, no longer possible because I have many ideas. It was important, I uh, think, that uh, bishop e2 wasn't possible. I check and check on e6, then take this bishop and the position is winning. And I saw best move, I, I thought best moves for him would be after king a2 I, I thought rook h2 would be the best move at first I thought maybe rook f2 but uh, it's it's not achieving enough because I can just check check and probably my knight is coming to f5 now he can go to f8 maybe also but let's say like this I go to f5 now with my king on a2 I can easily give up this pawn and king a3 is always going to come strong so I was thinking rook h2 was best move for him and while he, he was thinking I was also trying to understand what to do here and finally I, I made decision to play queen e4 I, I stop his pawn I always have queen a8 queen e4 perpetual because I'm aware that my position is probably winning now, but uh, with so little time on clock it is not bad to have this perpetual. Also I can sometimes just gain time and time and then continue to, to play. So I was going to play like this, but uh, he played bishop c2 instead. This, this part of game he, he was not really playing so well. Now I, I thought I was winning. I checked like this, I repeated the position to get some time, ok knight is coming to f7 for the third time but in this first position there was pawn on h6 so it's not a triple repetition, I just used it to get extra time to think but after king j8 I saw that queen e6 was winning. Now knight g5 is coming and there is no way he can stop this, there are many mating threats so the only way for him to defend was rook f2 
and I played knight g5 anyway after king h8 I simply took the pawn on, on e3 now I have two pawns more and uh, I also have strong attack I even saw how I would win I think until the end after rook f6 check he covers I played another check and played knight e6 attacking his rook and bishop and I simply wanted to eliminate his bishop to because I <coughs> I knew the material that was left uh, was enough to win the game he tried to create some tricks with rook f3 mm, now he, he might go bishop b3 and my king must go to a3 if, if I for example take this which I thought also was winning he checks I cannot go to the first rank so maybe he can take this pawn I don't know maybe he can attack my queen some nothing works but I didn't want to give him this chance after rook f3 I checked on e8 now he cannot go king h7 because of knight g5 so he has to play bishop f8 and now initially I was planning to take on f8 but then I saw knight d4 was much stronger I played this move and he resigned the game okay what can I say I was fighting well I think uh, I, I was not uh, I only recently started playing this opening and I was not uh, so much familiar with ideas and everything he played the first stage first 30 moves he, he was flawless then near the time trouble he probably missed a chance to get the position with the queen rook and bishop and same number of pawns where his king is safer and he has good attack on, on the queen side and I think it would be really difficult to hold that position after the time trouble I played that part really well and we got to some position where he, he could and he had to make a, a draw and it was quite easy but for some moment he had uh, for some some strange thinking some blindness or something I, I don't know how to explain it he made a, a terrible mistake and I managed to win this game <coughs>